Hi everybody, Jill here. Welcome to Keto Living Over 50 and our very first Keto Ketchup. So what exactly are Keto Ketchups? They're not a condiment, I can tell you that. Um, they are really very similar. If you're familiar with my other channel, maybe you've hopped on over from my other channel, which I say thank you and welcome. They're gonna be similar to gab sessions. I do Sunday gab sessions on my other channel and uh, they're a lot of fun. This is going to be similar except for it is going to be very focused on the keto living lifestyle instead of just sort of all over the place. Uh, which is fun, but I'm definitely going to stay centered on that. So it's also catch up. And what I mean by that is I'm going to catch you guys up with how I'm doing, how I'm feeling both emotionally with all of this, physically, how am I feeling? Um, I'm going to weigh in the morning of recording to let you know what my scale is saying. And also maybe more importantly, what my glucose readings are doing, my ketones, how I'm going about eating that week just just to let you know how i'm doing um, and then from time to time i will share with you little tidbits maybe of things i've read that i think you might find super interesting or come across maybe i'll you know talk about certain grocery items that i have been really liking or finding something that i think you guys should know about so it's going to be kind of just us getting together grab some coffee and tea cozy up and we're going to connect with each other. And one of the things that I really, really love about my Gab Sessions and my other channel is it really sort of brings the community together. And we're slowly but surely building a little community here. But the Keto Ketchups, I think, are gonna be a wonderful way for all of us to kind of get to know each other. If you find something particularly um, relatable, then share that down below. Let me know how you're doing as well. I don't care if you haven't started yet and you're, you're going to think about it, or if you've been on this lifestyle change for quite some time, please, please, please share down below. I love hearing from you and I know everyone else will too. So it's just a, a great time for us to all kind of gather up and uh, regroup and touch bases. Okay, so this keto ketchup, I did weigh myself this morning because I knew I was gonna be recording this. So I know what that says. And I'm gonna get my meter because I forgot what my readings were today. I've done it only once. Um, and how I'm feeling. I also have something I wanna talk about and that is kind of where sneaky sugars can sneak in without you really knowing. Also nasty fats, the bad fats. And so I'm gonna be talking about that and sharing with you alternative um, products that you can choose instead that way you don't have to avoid you know, completely that I am enjoying and I'm finding uh, to be really good. So I'll share that with you too. All right, so not every keto ketchup is gonna have this long before we get into things. I just know this is our first one and I wanted to let you know what they're gonna be all about. Okay, so um, I did get on the scale. I told myself that I wasn't gonna do this but once a month. And that's because I can get very obsessive with the scale. I wanna get on it every day and then I get discouraged or maybe I'm like, oh, or you know, most of the time it's like, Ugh. And then my day just sort of, I, I tell myself it doesn't, but you know, my day does sort of, I don't know, that resonates with me all day if it's not good news. And as you know, if you listened to how I'm gonna do this differently this time, is I really have to focus on other things besides the weight loss. And I think that is really key for those of us in middle age, because sometimes, generally, not all the time, but sometimes, it comes off us much, much slower. And a lot of that has to do with we are older. We've had many more years of metabolic damage that has occurred. And before we can turn things around, we have to heal and that can slow down weight loss. As well as just trying to figure things out in the beginning, trying to figure out you know, uh, how we're gonna eat and what we're eating that maybe is making us lose our weight very, very slowly. So it's a process, definitely a process. Um, but I do think it's important that we focus 
elsewhere, not just on what the scale says. You know, see how your glucose readings are doing because that's going to tell a big story. You don't even have to completely get too hung up on ketones um, because there are a lot of different factors that can really kind of read in to those readings um, that can tell you falsities about what's really going on. So you don't have to get really obsessive with your ketones either. Um, I would pay more attention to how you're feeling. You can tell eventually when you're in ketosis and when you're in ketosis. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, and how your clothes are starting to fit. How are you feeling? Um, is your brain fog lifting? Those are all the signs that are so much more important than what your little reading says on your ketone meter. So. However, I decided since I want to do these keto catch-ups once a week that I am going to weigh myself that morning uh, before I record. So once a week, I can see if I've had anything happen on my scale. So around the end of December, I weighed myself. I started this on December 30th and have been very, very strict. It's, it's, I'm doing kind of a lifetime lifestyle, pretty strict I, I can't do the dirty keto, you know, the dirty keto where you start bringing in snacks, keto snacks, and um, eating a whole lot of snacks in between even with nuts and, you know, all of that. that that's going to really not work for me. So on December 30th, I went ahead and decided to, this has to happen. And um, so now it is January the 22nd or the 23rd, anyway. So not a whole lot of time, almost next week. I think I've got another week and or so to go before it'll be an entire month. So um, I weighed myself before I decided to do this and it was sort of at the end of December after Christmas and I weighed 175 point, I wanna say it was 0.6 or 0.4. I, yeah, because you know, when we know that we're up there, we tend not to get on the scale much. So I wasn't shocked because I knew I was in the 170s, but that is definitely the highest I've ever weighed in my entire life, including the nine months pregnant with all three of my children. <laughs> you know, So that's where I started. And then about two weeks in, um, so it was just mm, uh, maybe last week or the end of the week before I weighed myself and I was 169.8, I think. And then this morning I got on the scale and I'm 166.8, yes. So um, I was actually expecting to maybe be about the same because a lot of this is water. I, I don't know, I, I was pleasantly surprised, I have to say. I really kind of wasn't expecting that. Although I'm starting to feel it. I, I feel, I, I can see that the upper part of my tummy is not sticking out quite so far because I think some of that water is, is being released and bloating from just eating all kinds of bad stuff. So my overall bloated feeling, that water retention too, has definitely gone down and I can I can actually see it and I kind of feel it too. So that's really super promising. I think that's wonderful. Uh, I, I was really surprised. So another pound to go and I, I can say that I've lost 10 pounds, which is, I have not been able to say I've lost 10 pounds in years. <laughs> so I'm very, um, I, I feel really good about it. But I wanna touch on kind of how I'm feeling. So, um, you know, I have not had that flu-like thing that you can get a lot of times yet, which has happened before. And what I do is I, I really do kind of feel achy. I get diarrhea. I can get kind of headachy, no energy. When I climb up the stairs, I get very out of breath. And um, I just feel a little fluish, not full on flu, nothing like that. But I definitely feel sluggish. Um, I feel like my fibromyalgia, my chronic fatigue has upped the ante and I just feel um, not so great. So I haven't had that this time until about yesterday. So here it is again, I started on the 30th. Yesterday I think was the 21st or 22nd. 
it's still out the window what day it is today in my head so um, and I am just I feel yesterday my muscle burning really went up um, from the time I woke up all day yesterday um, you know the traps I get it in my upper back area all the way up to the sides of the neck up to the atlas my traps and a little bit all in that area burn 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 um, you know and uh, so I had that um, I just I felt I did feel a little out of breath I felt uh, my muscles just burned even going up the stairs um, it, my legs were just very kind of weak and burning and um, so in my head I'm thinking okay well I did my electrolytes in the morning I do need to get to the doctor and I was gonna put that off for a bit but I think I'm gonna make an appointment probably in February sometime I wanna I just um, if this continues I think one experiment that I can do is take an electrolyte, my electrolyte powder, a little later in the day as well as first thing in the morning after my um, collagen coffee. Uh, maybe, you know, that's kind of what it feels like. Like, you know, the my, my muscles are just burning and um, heartbeat racing when I go up the stairs. I, I mean... To me, that's a sign of dehydration or just maybe my electrolytes are out. So I know that doing that can help and it helps me feel better in the morning. So anyway, I kind of want to see if I take another bit of it, not maybe even half a dose later on in the day, if that will help. Um, so yeah, I've had kind of an escalated um, fibromyalgia stuff, chronic fatigue. And I do think it's weird that it's coming on now rather than at the very beginning, but here's my hypothesis as to why. Um, I notice that I'm starting to get readings now in the mid twos with my ketones when I take them. They could be even a little higher other times, you know, but I've been noticing that they're creeping up a little bit. So what I think is going on is that in within my body, I am now starting to really get into that nutritional ketosis now, you know, and because of that, I think is why I am experiencing now that keto flu kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to continue taking my MCT oil, my brain octane oil. I might decide, even though it might slow down weight loss, um, adding that a brain octane oil with the MCTs I might actually kind of add a little bit more later on the day as well as my electrolytes just to see if it will help me help my body kind of um, get through this if that is indeed what's going on here so I don't know it's just an idea if you don't know what I'm talking about regarding how with this brain octane oil stuff in the MCTs I did do a video uh, and uploaded it just a few days back about that all right so I have no idea what I was just talking about my battery died <laughs> and so I thought it was a good opportunity to run downstairs get my meter and some of these little grocery items that I wanted to share with you very first reading that I took and I want to say this is by the way this is my my kitten this <laughs> This is um, Lila, Lila May. She's a rag doll, adorable, and she wants my attention. Well, honey, okay. All right, so um, my cat demanded my attention. This is Lila May, by the way. You will probably see her from time to time during our keto catch-ups. Um, she, she was really uh, close to my microphone. Okay guys, so I got my my ketone meter, my Keto Mojo. I love this meter. Um, it's I like it better than the other one I used to use back when. I like it because the screen is nice and big. It's super easy to do. It has a Bluetooth option. You can download an app on your phone and via Bluetooth, super easy, transfer your readings over to the app on your phone and then you have everything right there on your phone. And I should have brought my phone because it's so much easier to look at my readings. It tells you the day, it tells you the time of day you took it, whereas this doesn't. So um, I can tell you that um, 
when I first started, my ketone re my ketone reading was 1.0, and I know you're not supposed to do your readings in the morning. I don't do them fresh when I get out of bed because there is this dawn effect where everything, you know, your cortisol rises to get you out of bed, hence then your glucose readings are going to be usually, you know, increased and then your ketones will be decreased. So um, I definitely, it'll give you kind of a false idea as to what's going on if you do it right when you get up. But I, I do it about an hour after I get up. So, you know, I feed Lila and my dog Loki. I make my butter coffee. I have, if my kitchen needs to be cleaned, I'll, I'll do that. And about an hour later, I'll sit down at the table and I'll do my readings, the first readings. I try to do them a second time, and I'll probably do this for a little while. Um, and then I, I won't do it as often, but I do it a second time. I've been experimenting with that, actually. So a lot of these readings, the second time in the day, were right before I'm getting ready to have dinner because I, ha I haven't had anything for a couple hours. And it's, you know, usually around 5, 6 o'clock. And I think that might be a, a better uh, kind of idea as to how I'm, I'm kind of doing through the day. Uh, so some of these readings are during that time as well. So again, the very first reading I took, I believe my glucose was 105 and that was my kind of morning reading. Um, and then my ketones were 1.0. So I was actually kind of excited because I was only about two weeks in and I thought I'm gonna wait, you know, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more time because I, I probably am not. Anyway, so, you know, I definitely was in ketosis and that's good. And, and so now my readings, the last yesterday and today, are creeping up, I've noticed, into the twos. Okay, so my reading today, um, keeping in mind that I hadn't had anything to eat, I had a few sips of my collagen coffee, and it was about 1.30. Um, my ketone level was 2.6, and my glucose was 79. That's um, pretty normal for me. Um, in the 70s, I feel pretty good. Upper 70s, you know, I feel pretty good. I would say upper 70s. So, and and that would, that's good. I think that means that my glucose is, is at a good level for me. And my ketones, I think, are really good. So that was today. So anyway, then my ketones are 1.3 that day. My, um, this was a morning reading again. My glucose was 103. Um, this was an afternoon reading. I can tell 1.2 on the ketones and 94 in my glucose. And then I had another glucose reading at 82. My ketones were 1.7. Had an 87 glucose reading. My ketones were 1.3. This is going back to when I was first using this. So I think you can see that eventually my glucose now is starting to come down and my ketone readings are starting to go up. So that's what we want. So I'm very pleased with that. Are you very pleased too? Yeah, I think that's great. So I think the fact that I know I'm losing a lot of water, I know I am, I'm, t I'm trying to keep hydrated, I'm trying to do my electrolytes. Um, I think that's super important for myself to, to make sure that I do that. Okay, so one of the places, you guys, that you really, because this is, I think, one of the issues I was having the first time around, and I, I really want to pay very close attention this time. One of the places that you can be accidentally sneaking some really bad fats in, sugar, and other nasties is your condiments, your salad dressings, your ketchup, your mayonnaise, those sorts of things. Um, you know, if you're upping your, um, your salad leafy greens and you're putting salad dressing, be really careful what you're drizzling on there because you would be so surprised. I mean, I have my favorites, my ranch dressing, my Bernstein's Italian. I can't do that, not anymore, because a lot of times salad dressings will use icky, nasty fats, canola oil, soybean oil, 
um, vegetable oils and those those are just not the good ones you don't want those and they'll put corn syrup sometimes or other kinds of sugar will sneak in there uh oh sorry she's playing <laughs> she's playing with the microphone hi baby how about oh, she, I know she's gonna crawl right back up here let me see if she'll let me put her down I love you okay I love you okay so um, one thing, I shop a lot through Whole Foods, Whole Foods uh, through Amazon.com and then I get my groceries delivered. Um, they do free delivery and you can tip if you want, but uh, they're the only kind of uh, grocery store delivery service that is truly free delivery. Now Whole Foods I like because they do carry some... Oh, oh, okay. Oh, well, we're not going to do that. I do like Whole Foods. They can be pricey. They're definitely pricey. Um, however, it's just my husband and I, if we were raising our three children and my son from time to time, um, but Shane is not here a lot, but um, it's just kind of just me and my husband. Sometimes it's just me or me and Shane. It's usually just two. So it's, an, it's, it's a doable for us. Again, if I was raising my kids and we had five of us at home, I'd never be able to afford it. But I do like Whole Foods because they give you good, um, you can find obscure brands or brands that are cleaner as well as their, 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 um, their meats. I have and love getting their ground hamburger that's grass fed and grass finished. They have choices in poultry and great eggs that some of them are local. It's just, a, I really like shopping with them. And the fact that they'll deliver to my door is, is really just the best thing since sliced bread, let me tell you. Anyway, so I found that they have Primal Kitchen. Primal Kitchen is really lovely. Um, you can also order directly from their website. You might be able to find them in your local grocery store. However, I had a hard time with that. So they make all kinds of salad dressings and marinades also. They have, this is for instance, the no soy teriyaki. Now if you're paleo, you could technically probably do this. My son loves it. He's not as strict as me, but I won't eat this because it does have some sugar in it. But the, but the ingredients are very clean. He really liked it, but it's one that I won't do. However, I do love the Caesar. They, they use, in their salad dressings, they use avocado oil. Um, and there's just no bad stuff. It's, it's quite a different ingredient deck than what you would see in other salad dressings. Okay, we're going to want to get on me again. So I pulled, because I've tried almost every single one of their salad dressings, and these are the two I pulled that are my favorites. Um, your taste may be very, very different, but I love their Caesar. They have a nice creamy Caesar dressing, and they have a lovely dreamy Italian Got to shake this one up. It's just a little creamier. I don't much care for their other Italian dressing, but this one, this one I do like. Now keep in mind though, because this I have noticed, is that you know we're so used to flavor enhancers, hidden. They don't always have to be MSG. They can be named other things. Um, that I found that these are, they're very good, but they are um, not just like flavor, you know, they're, they're very uh, mellow. So I don't know, I, I have, I, I'm starting to get used to it now. Um, and I was just expecting a little more flavor with all of them. But again, I think my taste buds have just been through the ringer with all, sorry. <laughs> no, you can't have that with all of the you know, flavor enhancers that we consume in our diets. And it takes a while for our taste buds to get off of those and taste foods for what they really are. So the other thing is like tonight, I'm gonna make a meatloaf. I'm gonna make a, a keto friendly meatloaf and I, I have to have ketchup with my meatloaf. Well, have you looked at ketchup in the ingredients? Sugar galore. Some of them have corn syrup. 
So um, Primal Kitchen has uh, unsweetened ketchup. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't opened this up yet, but I plan on not only eating my my meatloaf with it, but I plan on putting some in my actual meatloaf recipe. And I'll probably even put a little on top to glaze it. Now, you know, this does have, for instance, two carb grams for one tablespoon, uh, but guys, it's fine. I don't consume a whole bunch with my meatloaf. And even if I did, uh, for instance, today, I've had really nothing to eat yet. So I think I, I can afford a few carbs. Also, the big bugaboo for me is mayonnaise. I am a huge Best Foods mayonnaise gal. I love Best Foods mayonnaise. Now, back when I was on this a few years back, I tried to make my own mayonnaise, you know, with the, the, the oil and then you get you just make it yourself with your egg and your vinegar and salt and pepper and and it did it made a lovely mayonnaise but i could not stand the taste of it oh unfortunately i also don't like the paleo mayonnaise that you can probably find at your local grocery again it tastes almost exactly the same as that and i just don't like it so i had to search out for something else unfortunately i can't do best foods so I found this, it's called Sir Kensington's Avocado Oil Mayonnaise. So I find this is definitely a healthier option. It isn't your best foods, no, but I do like it better than any of the other ones that I have tried. So this one is, is a good for me. I can do it. I can do this. It's good. Uh, for instance, I got some, um, I had a salad and I put some tuna in it and I added this to it as kind of the dressing, mixed everything up and it, and it was good. I liked it better than the other stuff. Is it best foods? No, but sorry, I can't do that anymore. So those are the things that I wanted to share with you. Um, check out Primal Kitchen. You really, got, you know, you just got to look over the ingredients pretty much of anything that you put in your mouth. You know. The thing is, is I know it seems like, oh my God, I don't care if I get a little bit of sugar, you know, with my ketchup or with, you know, this looks good. There's just, you know, but there's a very little bit of sugar, but there's sugar in here. It's okay. Well, the thing is, I'm trying very hard to be as strict as I can about that because I just don't want to fire my brain off with, okay, I have some sugar. I want some more. Um, and I just think it's more of that kind of zap, that little connection that our brains are making with us that I, I want to avoid. Not so much the sweet taste, but again, that's part of the connection. Uh, so I'm trying to really do that differently this time. Okay, here you go, babes. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for this keto ketchup this week, our first one. So weekly, I'm going to be getting you guys caught up as to how I'm feeling. Again, I haven't been feeling so great the last couple days. I am starting to feel a little better when it comes. I am starting to feel a little better um, as the day kind of progressed when it comes to my muscle burning. Because, you know, when I start getting that feeling, it does feel like a little bit of a, of a um, flu type feeling is coming on where it starts kind of going down my back where I ache when I have the flu kind of down, you know, into the side area. And then sometimes I'll even feel like I could be getting the chills. Uh, the flu is going around in this area, but I know I don't have it because I'd be really sick by now. So. Anyway, I felt like it was starting to go that direction, but then about halfway through the day, I was starting to feel a little better. So, and I also drank some, a good amount of water. So that's a telltale sign too. Hi baby. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is my cue. <laughs> Lila, I love you honey. Oh my gosh. This is my cue. I'm going to have to let you go. I'm going to feed her her dinner and my Loki. And I will see you guys really soon. Bye bye. <laughs> Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time